Section 7.3, reaction stoichiometry. So again, let's review what we're looking at here with this chemical equation. Again, this equation tells us that we've got two moles of carbon monoxide combining with one mole of oxygen gas to produce two moles of CO2. So this makes sense and we're clear at this. But remember what we talked about at the very beginning, we aren't just limited to using exactly the numbers of moles in the equations, right? All that matters is that the ratios hold. The actual amount themselves doesn't matter. So because of this, we can use these coefficients as a mathematical ratio so we can calculate the amount of any of the chemicals in the reaction. So to go from moles of one thing in the reaction to moles of another thing in the reaction, we want to use the coefficients. So use the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation to make conversion factors called stoichiometric factors. So again, it's important that you can only do this when you're working in moles and you must use the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. Now you want, want to put the moles of what you know on the bottom and the moles of what you are trying to find on the top and then fill in the coefficients next to the correct units. So let me show you an example problem. Again, let's go back to that equation we were talking about there. Consider the complete reaction of 3.82 moles of CO to form CO2. I do also want to mention, if nothing is said about oxygen gas, you can assume that you have enough oxygen gas. So 3.82 moles of CO to form CO2. Calculate the number of moles of CO2 produced. So here we are trying to convert from CO to CO2. So we have two options for our conversion factors, right? We can use those coefficients from the balanced chemical equation as a conversion factor. So we can write, write it as two moles CO2 over two moles CO, or the other way around, two moles CO over two moles CO2. You can write it either way, whichever way is useful for solving the problem that you're on. So here we are trying to convert from moles CO to moles CO2. So I'm gonna use this way right here because I want moles CO to cancel. So 3.82 moles CO, moles CO cancels. So 3.82 times two divided by two. And obviously this gives the final answer of 3.82 moles CO2. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. All right, next it says, consider the complete reaction of 3.82 moles of CO to form CO2 calculate the number of moles of O2 needed. Okay, so here we've got 3.82 moles CO and it's stating calculate the number of moles of O2 needed. So you're not just limited from going from a reactant to a product, you can go from reactant to reactant, you can compare products as well. You can really convert from one thing to another. Anything in the chemical equation is fair game as long as you're in moles and as long as you're using the balanced chemical equation. So I'm trying to go from CO to CO2 so again, I'm gonna use those coefficients as a stoichiometric ratio or as my conversion factor. So I'm gonna write two moles CO on the bottom and one mole O2 on top. So now mole CO cancels. So I got 3.82 times one divided by two gives 1.91. So my answer, 1.91 moles O2 would be required. Okay, let's have you try a knowledge check question. How many moles of oxygen are needed to react with 7.5 moles of aluminum? Okay, and the correct answer is A, 5.6 moles A2. So I've got 7.5 moles aluminum. And the question is asking how many moles of oxygen gas are needed? So I'm trying to go from aluminum to oxygen gas. So I would write, four moles aluminum on the bottom and three moles O2 up top. And you get the answer A, 5.6 moles O2. All right, let's look at a moles to molecules example. This problem states, how many carbon dioxide molecules are produced when 0.750 moles of propane is combusted according to this equation? And usually I'll give you the equation that's balanced, but if it's not balanced, you would need to balance it first. But this one is balanced. So I'm trying to go from moles C3H8 to molecule CO2. So first thing I should do is use stoichiometry to go from moles propane to moles carbon dioxide. Then once I have moles of carbon dioxide, now I can find molecules using Avogadro's number. So 0 0.750 moles C3H8. I'm gonna use those coefficients from the balanced chemical equation as my stoichiometric factor or as my conversion factor. So one mole C3H8 goes on the bottom, 
three moles CO2 goes on top. So now mole C3H8 cancels, and the unit I'm left with would be mole CO2. And so you can stop there and break this into two parts. So my answer now is 2.25 mole CO2. Now I'm going to go ahead and use Avogadro's number. So 2.25 mole CO2 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd over mole CO2. And this gives 1.35 times 10 to the 24th molecule CO2. So here I broke this into two steps, but I do want to note that you could put this conversion factor right here and just chain this all together all in one long step and you would still get the same answer. Just pay attention to your units. I know it's tedious, but it is really important, especially in stoichiometry, that you are writing your units because then it makes it easy to track mistakes if you end up getting the wrong answer. Now, what about grams? Well, we can't go directly from grams of one substance to grams or moles of anything else. Remember, the only relationship between two different chemical chemicals in a reaction is moles using the stoichiometry and using the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. You cannot convert from grams of one thing to grams of another. You first need to use molar mass to convert from grams to moles, then go from moles to moles using stoichiometry, and then finally moles to grams again using a molar mass. So let's look at this problem here. What mass of sodium hydroxide, NaOH, would be required to produce 16 grams of the antacid milk of magnesia, which is magnesium hydroxide. So we want to produce 16 grams magnesium hydroxide, and we want to know how much sodium hydroxide do we need. So we need to go from mass, MgOH2, to mass, NaOH. So we need to break this into multiple steps. First, we need the molar mass of magnesium hydroxide, so we can figure out moles MgOH2. Then we can use our stoichiometric factors to convert from moles MgOH2 to moles NaOH. And then final step, convert from moles NaOH to mass NaOH using its molar mass. So let's look at those steps. I'm going to start with 16 grams of magnesium hydroxide. And I'm going to convert to moles using the molar mass, which I found to be 58.319 grams. Okay, so now grams MgOH2 cancels. And I get 0 0.27 full. 74 moles MgOH2. And again, I do want to emphasize here that I'm going to break this into multiple steps to make it easier for some people, and also because it just saves me room on the PowerPoint. But you can, and I do recommend that you practice chaining all of these steps together, because once you practice this, it's going to make it a lot faster, and you'll save time on these stoichiometry problems. Now I'm going to convert from moles magnesium hydroxide to moles sodium hydroxide using those coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. So I'm working with MgOH2, and I'm trying to go to NaOH. So I've got one mole MgOH2 on the bottom, two moles NaOH on top, so MgOH2 cancels. This gives me 0 0.549 moles NaOH, and if you're wondering why this is 9 and not 8, it's because I used, I rounded here for sig fig reasons, but I would go on, I used the unrounded value in my calculator to find this answer, which is why there's a little bit of a rounding discrepancy here. Final step is I need to find grams NaOH, so I just need the molar mass of NaOH. So 0 0.549 times 39.997 grams NaOH over one mole NaOH. And this gives my final answer of 22, so I'm gonna round to two sig figs since my initial value had two. So 22 grams of sodium hydroxide are required to produce 16 grams of magnesium hydroxide. All right, let's have you try a knowledge check question here. How many grams of ammonia are produced when 7.35 grams of hydrogen reacts completely with nitrogen to produce ammonia? And again, just assume that you have enough nitrogen. So how much ammonia is produced when you react to 7.35 grams of hydrogen? Okay, and the correct answer here is B, 41.4 grams. So let me write out these steps, and I'm going to do it the chain it together way. 7.35 grams H2. So first convert to moles H2 using the molar mass. So 7.016 grams H2. One mole H2 goes up top. Now I'm going to go from H2 to NH3 using the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. So three moles, H2 on the bottom. And again, sorry about my handwriting. I'm just using my finger on a touch screen. And two moles, NH3 up top. And then finally here on the bottom, molar mass. So one mole, NH3. And this would be 17.031 grams, 
and H3. Sorry, I ran out of room a little bit. All right, and there is your, um, once you chain this all together, you find grams H2 cancels, moles H2 cancels, moles NH3 cancels, and round into three sig figs, the final answer is B. Final answer is B, 41.4 grams. All right, and just to sum this all up, here's the stoichiometry flow chart for you. So you can go multiple different ways, and I'm gonna ask you about these different types of questions. I could ask you for a number of particles. I could ask you about volume using molarity, what we learned from chapter six. I could ask you about volume using density. Uh, so pay attention to this, these kind of things, but really it all revolves around this key facet in the middle here, middle here, using the stoichiometric factor to go from moles of one thing to moles of another. Okay, so here are a couple practice problems for you to try. So pause the video, give these practice problems an attempt. And once you have done so, here are the answers. So here's the answer for 1A. You can find B, C, and D on the chapter seven group worksheet key. And here's the answer for number two. So that concludes section 7.3. I'll see you in the next one for section 7.4, reaction yields.